Hello, Craven Community College friends. It's good to be with you again. Uh, this is Bill Bonder, Nathan Stout, and Advising Adventure, joined by our good friend, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Jeff Schultz. And I'm going to let you introduce yourself, my friend, and let people know about you want the, what you want them to know about you. Guys, everyone, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, whenever you see this. Uh, I'm Jeff Schultz. I'm director of the trade programs over here at the Bolt Center. Um, we provide a lot of hands-on skilled trades here, everything from manufacturing classes to the construction trades to forklift driving, environmental safety classes. Believe me, the list is growing and growing here. Good morning. Good afternoon, whatever it is, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> We love your energy, Jeff, man. And whether it's morning or afternoon, we all can use a dose of that energy. So we appreciate it. So yeah, Nathan and I are just gonna, you know, kind of ping and pong some questions at you. Um, I like to play on words. We talk about a higher education, right? H I G H E R and getting degrees and diplomas and things like that. But if you spell that word higher a little differently, H I R E, then we're talking about a higher education where you can get some uh education, training, certification, and get out there in the workforce, right? So we talk about workforce development, the Vault Center. Um, tell us a little bit about what makes it different if students come up and talk to Nathan and I about getting into the curriculum, welding, and automotive classes and things like that. Uh, how's that different from what you offer through workforce development? Sure. Um, let's use welding as an example, okay? Because, you know, you know you can get a associate's degree program, go through the welding program at Craven Community College. And by the time you're done with that, you've got an associate's degree. It's about two, two and a half, two years usually, right? To get through all that. Well, down here at the Vault Center, we can put you through the same welding components and get your welding level one and level two certifications in as little as six months. So the higher is also faster when it comes to higher education. So we provide the hands-on short-term education, whereas on the curriculum side, they provide the long-term, and they're setting you up not only for your hands-on trades with welding, but they also help you if you're gonna become a manager, supervisor, a little bit more education through the curriculum side. So what we provide here is the hands-on training and get you employed quickly. So, can you tell us, Jeff, what out of the businesses and companies around the, the New Bern and region outside of New Bern, some of the neighboring counties and towns? Um, so, where are people finding employment when they come to the Volt Center? And, and what, what kinds of other than welding and, and automotive, you know, what other kinds of training programs? You talk about fast track and this and that. Yeah. T tell us about. Um, you know, where, where that partnership is with the businesses in the, in the community and, and uh, what our folks are doing when they get done with you. Let me take a deep breath and see if I can get this all done in 30 seconds or less, right? No, but, uh, you know, the welding classes, a lot of that is going to be machine fabricating. So there's a plethora of industry and businesses everywhere from here to on base to the ports here, Moorhead City ports, for example. But, I mean, just right here in our local James City area, there are opportunities of employment from, from that industry. Some of the other classes, though, for quick, you know, turnaround hire, let's talk about the manufacturing fast track classes. And maybe Eddie will chime in during this, but that was really Eddie's baby when he got this thing going here at the Volt Center. We had an industry roundtable. We got all the big leaders from the manufacturing, the industries, um, without getting into too much and all the big, a lot of partnerships involved here. And we asked them, what is it they needed? And they needed people that would get hired and stay hired. So let's use Bosch, let's use Moen and Dredora. They make the dishwasher baskets exclusively for Bosch. Those are three major employers in the industry area here in manufacturing. For two days, you can complete a manufacturing pathways class. Two days, you get the training, you get the soft skills, and you go through the hiring process. And if that HR department at individual company selects you, you'll probably be starting work as early as the following week. So it's a two-day class here, 16 hours. Employment could start as early as the next week. I don't care what your background is, whether you have a blemish background, 
you know, some criminal background, everything is, they will hire you on a case by case basis. So that does not discount anybody. Everyone has the equal opportunity here to get employed. We also have a warehouse fast track and that requires a little bit more training and skills. And that is going to be a three day program where you're focusing more on how to operate the machinery. So again, we talk about partnerships. Recently, we got another clamshell forklift donated from boss that uses today's ergonomic skills when you're operating the machinery. Most forklifts use the little uh, levers that you move up and down to control. Now we're using what they're currently using in, in the industry. So you're getting that hands-on training and that equates to retention at the workplace. You don't come in after first break and leave and give up. You might do that here at the Volt Center, but that just saved the employer thousands and thousands of dollars annually. So we're giving them the training they need to become successful and we're giving the employer what they need, employees that are willing and able to work. Um, other classes, other opportunities of employment, HVAC, electrical, carpentry, plumbing, new this year, masonry program, forklift operator classes. Those are some of the other classes. And when I say short term, most of these are three to six months. Let's say college semester, you can finish one of these level classes with the exception of forklift. We push those out in the weekends, 56 hours, and you've got your forklift, your OSHA credentialed forklift license. So we're following all the OSHA safety standards and you get that little card that's good for, I believe, three years until it has to be renewed again. That sounds great, Jeff. Um, I know you mentioned a little bit about some of our uh, opportunities for like our returning citizens. Uh, do you partner with some other programs to kind of help them out along the way to um, go uh, lead towards employment? Tell me a little bit more when you say other programs. Uh, oh, yeah, hit me in the direction here. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, like uh, the uh, boot camp that's offered by Mr. Singleton, those type of uh, programs. Yeah, so Greg Singleton is our HRD director here at Craven Community College, and he's part of the Craven Pamlico Reentry Council program that is being used throughout the state, is what I'm told, or at least it's starting to be modeled based on what Greg put together here at Craven Community College. But it allows those individuals that have recently been released from custody to go through his boot camp program. And I don't know the exact hours or days he can give you those details, but when they're finished with that, they can come to the Vault Center, provided they've completed it successfully. And that scholarship funding will help pay for a class, such as welding or any of the other trades I just mentioned, to lead them to gainful employment. Uh, we have other programs, too, that we run through the community through JCPC, which is the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. So that is a skill up program that we have that allows those students that would otherwise have been charged as adults and incarcerated to come through our program here for our core class and get some valuable trades training. And some of these students, their pathway may lead them to becoming a curriculum student. We've had one student where you know, they were 17 when they started this program. They turned 18 while they were in it. And now they're a salesperson for a manufacturer that they're traveling around the central part of the U.S. 18, 19 years old. So we, you never know where the path is going to lead them. Um, other hands-on skilled trades, which is buzzing these last couple of months, Jared Bay Boat Works. We all know that company. They don't build you a boat from stock, they build you a boat from the beginning of the plant. They're hiring everything from welders, carpenters, electricians, HVAC plumbers. You need all of that to build a boat. Diesel mechanics, I didn't even mention that. We have a diesel program here now as well that that's uh, where Eddie is actually located right now. And uh, that class too provides opportunities for employment, including Jared Bay. In fact, they're here right now talking with the students again. It's great to hear. That, that sounds like a def, definitely a lot of opportunities out there, Jeff. Um, I know you were talking about scholarship opportunities, and I know it's a little different. You know, on the curriculum side, we have students applying for financial aid. But what yeah. what type of scholarship opportunities are out there uh, for these students? 
Good, good question, because that, that really is going to determine whether they're coming through this program or not. Uh, if they don't have the funding, they're not going to get through. But yeah, scholarships, for example, is we have a lot of workforce development opportunity scholarships. It's not a 100% scholarship, but it does help pay part of the tuition. And if you have a little skin in the game, you usually end up being a little bit more successful with that. Look who just joined us, friends. It is Mr. <laughs> Eddie Foster in the flash. Hey, the man. You know, how's everybody doing, Jeff? Everybody doing well, good? Yes, sir. The man, the myth, the legend. Thanks for joining us, Eddie. <laughs> we, we are live right now. We're doing this recording, and uh, Jeff was just telling us about the scholarship opportunities. And I do love the phrase skin in the game. And if we elaborate on that for a minute, is when you invest in something, um, you pay a little more attention to it, right? I mean, when, yeah. when you've got um some type of accountability uh and investment in something you're going to give maybe just a little bit of extra attention and effort uh and so i'm glad to hear that you know there is support uh to help people uh but but given the opportunity when folks put a little bit of that skin in the game as we say um, yeah. that i think it makes a difference definitely now where do you want eddie to fill in any gaps that 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 we before we get too far into it some more, sure. is there something you want him to speak to? Yeah, well, Eddie, we, we touched base a lot about, well, what is it you guys have here? So I, I, I started off with the manufacturing pathways. I talked a little bit about the warehouse. You can sort of see in Eddie's back window some of the warehouse equipment that they're using. Uh, I did not touch much, much yet on the diesel program and future programs coming over there to the garage, but this is a great camera shot for someone that's wondering well, what do you mean the diesel garage? You, you're looking at the, those two pair of picture windows behind Eddie, and that's going back a good 150 feet, maybe a little bit longer to the garage on the end of the bay. So you want to touch a little bit, Eddie, about the diesel program right now and what kind of opportunities the students will have? Sure. Hey, first, let me just uh, say Gary was here, so I had to um, not join in when I was actually asked to, but... Uh, he, he definitely, when the vice president comes in, you got to take him uh, do what you got to do. But anyway, uh, let me even talk about just a little bit more of, the, of than just the diesel program. Let's talk about the manufacturing career pathway just for a moment. That program, right, as of to date, uh, this, this year alone, we probably have run somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 classes. Uh, the class today for the warehouse, we have 10 students engaged. We also have the fast track for DSH. We have four, three or even four students in that program. Tell you how well respected the program is. Jamie Barnes, who is the HR representative from BSH, she came out this morning on her day off. She spent over an hour meeting with the students of her time on her day off. And by the end of the week, they in, expect to engage with them on interviews for all 13 or 14 students for full-time employment at BSH. Our 56 hour forklift program runs on the weekends. That's the only time we have access to the lot without a lot of uh, cars going in and out. We have eight students in that program. Jeff Martin from BSH came out this weekend. The folks that are actually, he spent probably, I'm gonna say an hour and a half or so out here on his day off came out, spoke with the students, observed the students, and one of the questions that was raised by one of the students, well, you know, we were operating this new forklift with the hand controls with the clamshell on it. What kind of a pay difference does that make? How about, and when he comes back and says, we have three openings immediately, starts off at 17 to $18 an hour, and we're going on 10, uh, our fifth day, 10 hours a day, so we work at 50 hours a week, you can anticipate a paycheck of around $1,100 to start with. I mean, to come out on the weekend and the things that uh, Jeff told the students that the relationship that he has with the college, and Jamie said the same thing when Gary was in the office this morning, the relationship we have with the college and the bowl, we really and truly don't utilize any of the temp services. I mean, nothing wrong with temp services. However, we find that the quality of the student coming on board with that knowledge base of at least what to do from a, a, a start point has proven to be very beneficial to us. So 
Now, when we're talking about the diesel program, let's talk about partnerships there. Well, let me back up just a minute. So far today, BSH, because of their belief in this program, we'll start with them. Jeff was telling you about the assembly line. They donated that assembly line that's over in the main building. They have donated two forklifts, both of them with the clamshells so the students could learn on that. They've donated a turbo truck. They've donated uh, the racking systems that we take and actually pull. They've allowed our instructors to go over and work and shadow their employees to develop these programs. The folks out at Mullen, right now we're anticipating two stand-up rider uh, pallet jacks. We're also getting a tugger truck from them, an order picker from them, and pallet uh, trucks as well. We're getting ready to open another warehouse program for them as well as soon as we get the equipment in. Chatsworth, they've given us the IT qubits to build and the tables to build them on that are over the main campus area or the main, the main building. And Rodura, we build baskets, train people to build their baskets. All of these folks come out. We've even got the folks from Jarrett Bay Boats coming out, talking with our students about employment opportunities from all of these classes. So uh, the opportunity is uh, just huge. With the diesel program, the partnership goes on as well. We reached out to Caterpillar. We reached out to Volvo. We reached out to Gregory Poole and also Cape Fear Community College. All of so far, I can't tell you the number of motors that we have that have been provided to us free. I can't tell you the number of, let's say, system components like rear ends and transmissions and all that kind of stuff that they have donated to us for free. We also re just received a $50,000 Danmar Marine diesel engine, 1200 horsepower that runs from Cape Fear. And then last week, they also said, well, guys, we really want to help you guys. Uh, they're donating five tractor trailers to us, Volvos that were just taken out of service. All we have to do is go down and pick them up. So the students that go through the program, they get a tremendous amount of hands-on opportunity to work with some of the greatest and the latest equipment in the industry. Uh, I'm, the Thompson Trucking came over. They're talking with our students about hiring them as soon as they complete the program. So the program for the engines is 360 hours. The program for the systems is 360. We're running a day class and a night class right now on the engines. And it's it'll end somewhere around the 1st of June. And then we start the systems, which will end in December. By the time they complete the program, they've already had interviews with Jared Bay, who said they would hire every one of them. They've already had hiring opportunities with Thompson Trucking locally that pretty much said they could hire you know, some of our, our students. And we continue to work with Volvo. They're going to be a part of our board for the diesel program. Also, Gregory Poole is going to be a part of that board for the diesel program. So we're really developing that network to get out there and be able to provide opportunities. On the construction path, Trader Construction couldn't be a greater partner with us. Uh, they're just awesome. And pretty much they too have said they would like to speak with all of our students about employment opportunities. We have a couple of new programs. We're getting ready to do a diesel, marine diesel, just for the boating industry around here. That'll probably be about a 100 hour program. It'll run through parts of the NCCER program. And then we're doing one that's going to be for the power generation for the generators. Uh, that are out there. So that program will be coming online. We're getting ready to do a field safety through NCCER. We hopefully will have that within the next couple of weeks running. So lots of innovation. Jeff, man, he's on top of everything. I call him the, the duty expert, uh, takes care of all the things for us and Ms. Antoinette. And uh, you cannot leave out Gary Boucher, who is our vice president, who is, man, he is the guy that supports us. And he's a guy that believes in us and really and truly he's got such a innovative mind uh, to make things happen for us. So, and you guys, I mean, you know, I cannot say enough good things about the college as well. Uh, everybody's a team and uh, we really and truly uh, appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, you probably should define duty when you say he's, you know, the duty leader. And, uh, but anyway, <laughs> and Jeff's the only guy that can put a hat on. <laughs> 
right? And Jeff's the only guy that can put a hat on like that, and his hair still look good when he takes it right back off. So oh we can tell you all kinds oh of things God. that Jeff does. <laughs> so, so Jim, thank you, Eddie. Man, that was a lot of great information for our listeners. So when they come in and they get in one of these programs, about how many days a week are they going to come in and about how many hours a day? I know you mentioned 360 hours. How does that break down into a day, days per week, and hours per day so folks can kind of say, well, that could fit in my schedule, or what would I have to juggle to make that work? Yeah, uh, for the diesel day program, they meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They come in at 8, leave at noon. And then on the evening program, or the night class, they come in at five o'clock and they get out at nine, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we left that gap open from 12 until five so that we could actually include the marine diesel and also include the uh, power generation program. So uh, those programs should be coming online, I would say by second term. So really and truly, we've made the schedule to where if you work during the night, you can come during the day, if you work during the day, you know, you can come at night. So we've really tried to be, I guess, available to anyone that wants to take the program. Our classes over in the Volt Center are similar for the electrical, HVAC, plumbing. They're primarily evenings, but like, for example, today I have an HVAC class that's running 8 o'clock to 11 a.m. I have an electrical class 8 a.m. to noon. And then in the evenings, usually 5.30 to 9, 6 to 9, 5.30 to 9.30, two to three nights a week. Some of them are doing four nights a week, so we can get them done within the college term. But that gives you an idea. So that's what's that about 12 hours, mm -hmm. 16 at the most per week per student. So, so are a lot of, a lot of your students are, are they working part time? Are these students who are currently unemployed and they're like, hey, look, I've got the time to really, really do this now. What, what kind of things are they juggling here on main campus? You know, we have students that are working full time, part time. Raising children, raising families, you taking care of parents, you know, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, what do your students generally look like? Same deal, brother. Same thing. Same exact yeah. deal. Yeah, we have students that uh, in a diesel program, for example, at night, they work full time during the day and they come in here in the evenings. Uh, same thing for the day class right now. All of these guys will get out, they have an evening job, and they'll go straight from here to work. We're, we currently have about 156 students that are actively participating in classes here right now. So that's between daytime and evening classes and weekends. I'm a student myself here right now. I'm taking some environmental safety classes as well. So, yeah, my days are really long. Today I got here about 7.30. I'm going to be leaving here about 9.30 tonight. <laughs> it, so it, well, that leads me to the question because... You mentioned the term soft skills uh, earlier on in the recording yeah. there, Jeff. Um, you know, we can train people on on how to work with engines, right? How to weld, uh, you know, how, how to do the assembly line. But talk, tell us about the importance of and, and define what these soft skills are that really make a difference. Because, Jeff, I'm wondering what your soft skills are when you're when you're taking these classes down there. You know, what, <laughs> what are you putting? What are you doing down there? One of my soft skills is I put toothpicks in the upper and lower eyelid <laughs> so that I can pay attention and stay awake during the class. Um, now, the other soft skill is communicating effectively with people. You know, you're going to be working in an environment with total strangers, especially in the manufacturing. So we teach these individuals. And when I say we, it's really our instructors. We couldn't do any of this stuff if it wasn't for the passion and soul that our instructors are giving to the students. So they're the ones that are making the difference in their lives by providing them the means to communicate effectively. Soft skills is also interviewing skills. So they teach them how to prepare for that interview. You know, it could be an online interview like we have here right now. How do you communicate with the person staring at this little camera thing? You know, we teach them a lot of those skills and uh, they come out a much better, you know, they're getting life skills as well. Not just soft skills I do coming through these programs. Let me add a little something to that as well. You know, right before COVID hit in February of I guess 2020, we actually started our first manufacturing roundtable. We sent the invitations out, and 
not shockingly, because we have such a great working relationship with our business partners. I think 12 or 13 of our business partners actually came. And we were offering a program that was manufacturing career pathways. I think it was 112 hours in length. And they said, it's a great program, but we need that program to be downsized because we need people quickly. And the 2 things they were really concerned about is retention. And actually rework, and if you think about it, those are 2 big items with any manufacturing facility. And so they said, we need something that would be 16 to 24 hours in length. We actually worked with them. They helped us design the curriculum. They helped us actually determine exactly what content they wanted in the soft skills. Let's talk about. They really wanted to see just as Jeff was saying how to work as a team. So they have exercises they do here where they work in groups of 2 and they do things to develop that team. And then the group grows to a little bit larger. They also work on the lines out there as teams and they all get to work at each 1 of the, at the stations as in a team concept. They also learn the soft skills about how to show up to work on time. How to come back from a break on time and 1 of the comments that we get is that. They used to have it to where that their new hires would come in and maybe by the middle of the day, they would go to break and never show back up. Well, they seemingly are not having that problem with the students that we are providing them. And I think Jeff can, you know, he can attest to the numbers better than I, but I think we probably had over 400 students made offers and at least 250 we know of except positions. They also learn about safety. And that was another component that they really wanted us to focus on machine guarding because everywhere you go, there's going to be machines and the guards are essential to keeping people safe. Walking, working surfaces, being able to understand about, you know, falls, slip trips and falls, being able to understand about uh, working with hazardous chemicals. So we, we included that into the program and then they actually do a lot of the hands on exercise activities on those simulators out there. By the time they finish the program and they get over to the job site, they have a pretty good understanding of what that job is going to entail and how to work alongside of another person because all of our companies right now are working some fairly significant overtime hours. So they're going to be working together quite a bit, but that's a part of it. Yeah, I'll touch base on those job hours we or job offers. What the, what we know, we've got over 205 known job offers right now since we started here. We, we moved in here June of 2019, okay? So the leaders in our community and the college thought this would be a great success story if by the end of December we hit not our 100 students. By the time we went to Christmas break 2019, we were at about 340 students have come through the program here. So we were very pumped for the 2020 season to start. January, we come running in here the first week of January, and wow, where we hit sideways two days ago, right? We got the announcement that we were shut down for two weeks. So, but fast forward to when we came back, and today, March 16th, 2021, we've already had 1,251 students overall come through the vault center doors. That, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that, that is amazing, Jeff. Uh, so Jeff and Eddie, we, uh, y'all, y'all provided us some great information today. And, you know, just as advisors, if we, if we have a student that's interested in, uh, 1 of your programs, how does that admissions process work? Or how does that look like? Well, you know, if you're there, if they're there with you there. Just walk across the or the parking lot there and go to the Brock building. If they're in town, come over here to 205 1st Street. That's where the Volt Center is located. We're right off the Pembroke Road exit, just a couple thousand feet down from the Lawson Creek Park entrance. You can't miss that big red brick building with the aluminum fence around it. And we'll get you signed up. Yeah, Ms. Antoinette. Uh, she's the, she is the gatekeeper, so to speak, and that she is great. Awesome working with the students. She knows a tremendous amount about all of our programs and she can help guide them through the process. She makes it mighty easy for everybody to get registered into the programs. 
So it's not as complicated when they come in to see us, you know, our admissions folks say, well, you know, we need you to fill out an application online. We need you to do a residency uh, no. application. We need to, we need your transcripts from high school and any other place you've ever been. We need DNA sample. Well, no, no, they don't. Need that. <laughs> we so, just so, want them to fill out a piece of paper and register. There's no application needed. Yeah. Makes it easy. Yeah. Definitely. It, it, gentlemen, we can't say enough uh, about, you know, what you've done with Gary Boucher. And I know he asked you about some fishing tips when he caught you this morning, Eddie. I know just hey, he did. Work. He did. I, I know what that man is all about. But, it, you know, it's about really, truly puts the community in it. Um, what we can offer up here on this campus, but what you offer down there in the Volt Center, living in the community down there. It's just amazing to me. Uh, and, and as we talked kind of before we went on the air, People who need that second chance in life, that third chance, that fourth chance, um, you know, just hit some hard times or, or, you know, decisions when we were younger or even when we were older. Uh, you know, there's there's always opportunity to redeem ourselves and to become uh, participants in the community uh, and feel like we're a part of that community. And I think we're all proud of, of the New Bern area and, and the locale around it. Um, and so we just appreciate what you guys do because we know you care passionately about our students. Uh, and who they are, where they're coming from, and where they can go, more importantly. Not just where they've been, but where they can go. Um, yeah. And so we appreciate that. I love this, you know, the, I call it playing in the sandbox, right? Uh, you got to know how to, you, you hopefully learn that when you're in elementary school about how to play in the sandbox, but it's so true as adults, just knowing how to uh, listen, uh, be in control, maintain composure of your own emotions and your thoughts. You know, when things aren't going well, I'm sure you see people frustrated either with the equipment or with each other. We do that here. Nathan tolerates me because I'm just, you know, <laughs> crotchety old guy that gets irritated and can't work the equipment right, you know, and gets frustrated. But, you know, we're all just in the end, we have to work together. We got to be partners. And that's just so true of, of what you guys are doing down there. And we appreciate that. Um, any other, anything else you want to just throw in there before we wrap this up? We try to keep it around 30 minutes and we always go over because there's just so much to talk about. Uh, if you know of anybody that wants a great career opportunity, uh, just send them down here. I mean, the, the employers definitely are teaming up with us and they give our students, uh, I guess, almost like a, a first choice or first look at. Uh, by going through the program, and I tell you what, a lot of our students they come back to talk with Jeff and I just about weekly. We have at least one or two come in, and it's not career changing that they'll tell us about. It's life changing, the things that they have been able to accomplish because of the training and the connection of the dots from the team. Not just not to, not just to both, but you know. You know, Bill, we've had you come down and, and have to work with us on, on programs as well. It, it's all about the team being able to connect the dots to the industry and get those individuals opportunities to make a change. Yeah, and remember, it's not just for the students. If you just want to learn a skill, you yep. have to take the classes here as well. You don't have to apply for that. Again, just register. We're, we're open Correct. to everyone that wants to come here and learn something. Oh, trust me, my wife wants to put me in the electrical program, the plumbing program, <laughs> so that I can not tear stuff up on the house as much as I do when I try to do it myself. <laughs> guys, we appreciate everything, everything you're doing. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah we enjoyed ourselves as much as we, we sure do. Absolutely. It. Nathan, you got any final words for us, man? Put, wrap us up here. No, it's just a great, great opportunity. And you, you might see me over that HVAC because I'm telling you, I'm tired of paying 40, 40, 50 dollars an hour for <laughs> somebody to fix my AC. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. Guys. Thank y'all. All right. Have a great day, gentlemen. Appreciate it. All right. Bye.